What's up guys, it's Jacob Whiteside. You're watching Dopeness TV, Dopeness Magazine. Only the dope survive. Thank you so much for watching. Peace. King Sharif, Dopeness Magazine. We're here with Jacob Whiteside. How's it going? It's going, dude. It's, it's going. going. You're sleepy. You're sleepy. I've been home in like 70 days and I've been touring and recording and I'm exhausted. But You're I, exhausted. I, I, I've got a little bit of energy in me. Right I now. mean, when the camera was off, you had a lot of energy. You were playing the guitar. Oh, yeah. I mean, I got, I got good sleep last night. I had a good meal. I woke up this morning and at about 8 a.m. I ate a cheeseburger for breakfast. So You eat cheeseburgers for breakfast? It's active diet. Really? I gotta try it. I gotta try it. That's why it helps the vocals. Helps the vocal protein. Unfortunately, the unfortunately I don't sing. You don't? No. Or DJ? No. Or <laughs> DJ. <laughs> Alright, man, let's let's back up a little bit. You were 13 when you started this thing. Yes. What was it like at 13 taking things into your own hands? Well, it was really awkward because I mean I was just like a little kid and I had like hair down to here, but no joke, and I never flipped it out of my face like most kids did. I always just left the ears of like a little emo kid. And I was playing like classic rock in my dad's like rock band um, that he was doing around town in bars mm -hmm. and freaking restaurants and like nasty, nasty places that I never want to go back to. Never. I'm thankful for it now because it, it kept me grounded. Mm -hmm. Like it just I'm more appreciative for the actual. So do you always of it now. do you always think about that stuff like when uh, you're always doing tours? Anytime I like anytime I'm just looking out at the audience like seeing all the faces, it's like wow. I remember when I used to play for like four people that were like eating dinner and being obnoxiously loud. Obnoxiously. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so you picked up a guitar out of all things. Why the guitar? My dad played guitar, so mm. that was kind of the direction I went for. I wanted to play electric guitar, but he made me play acoustic, which I'm thankful for now. So once you picked it up, he said, "Hey, there's a certain type of guitar." Yeah, I played. So I played the acoustic, and now playing electric is like super easy. He said if I played the electric, the acoustic first, I would get my work in where it's a harder mm -hmm. guitar to play. So I'm thankful so for it now. You can actually pick up any guitar you want and just go to work. Absolutely, go to town. Absolutely, actually, they make this instrument which I played on my EP called a banjo guitar mm. and it's just like a guitar but it, play, it sounds like a banjo so you can play it but it sounds amazing it's i gotta so cool. give it a try man i don't think you i'm play gonna guitar gonna... no i want to try pick up the banjo. <laughs> that'd be your first instrument <laughs> I, I remember you told me that man i remember <laughs> you told me what was the first melody you played when picking up a guitar do you remember i played uh justin bieber's one time two chord changes g and c sitting here in front of my webcam, we set up my dad's laptop. It was like right when webcams were big on computers. Mm -hmm. It was like the new thing. I was like, all right, I'm gonna sit down. This video took six hours to upload. I set it up, hair down to here, kitchen in the background. Man, a magic girl, my heart went knock, knock. No emotion whatsoever. No emotion, just but it was beautiful. Down. It was beautiful for what it was. And when doing that, what made you choose Justin Bieber of all people? Well, I had this girlfriend at the time, and it was like long distance. She lived 20 minutes from me, and neither one of us could drive because we were like 13. So, and her dad hated me. I called her. I called her one time. I was like, "Is, is Charlotte home?" Mm -hmm. He just hung the phone up. He hung the phone up. Hateful man. Was that your first heartbreak? Yeah. But <laughs> she was obsessed with Justin Bieber. It was right when the craze was going on. Right when the cardboard cutout phase was big. She got one for her birthday. Pissed me off. I was Pissed like, you off. Why is she so obsessed with this kid? Why does she want him to sleep in her room with him? This freaking mm -hmm. cardboard cutout. And she's taking selfies with it, and I'm like, what can I do to get that attention on me? So I picked up the guitar, started singing Justin Bieber, and, she, and, now it's and, then she, and then she loved me again. Then she loved you again. It's a love speak story. To? Still speak to I do not speak to her. I have no idea where she is. It was middle Man. school love. Middle, middle school, school love. Ah, cool. Now, your numbers are incredible. Phenomenal. Okay. I mean, you're over 1 million on Twitter. What's it like being a young dude and you're doing adult numbers? Well, it gets stressful. I mean, there's so many people, negative and positive, at all times looking at you. So, I mean, just, like just now, I posted a picture of my shoes and I didn't realize that uh, Zane from One Direction just quit One Direction. Every single reply was like, why are you on Twitter right now? Why are you tweeting pictures of your shoes? Zane just left. We're crying and you're posting pictures of your shoes. And I was like, hmm. Crazy. Okay, let me get off Twitter for a minute. But there's just so many people and so much going on. Sometimes it gets stressful, but I'm thankful for it. I love it. I'm always on Twitter. You're I'm always on Instagram too. Oh, Instagram, dude. I love it. I love it. I love all aspects of it, especially having a photographer and be able to capture cool pictures. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to have access to your fans 24 7. Now, like mm -hmm. back in the day, your favorite band would drop an album or a mixtape mm -hmm. and you wouldn't hear from them for a year. But now you yeah. can drop your music and you can hang out with them all the way up until the next process. Without anybody there. Absolutely. Do you give credit to. Social media as it says to oh, me absolutely. like the labels. Absolutely. I mean, it's been so easy I mean, it's not been easy like it's it's not easy posting videos like I used to post three three videos a week Used to do comments, screens on all of them and 
it's not easy, but it, it's a lot easier than how it used to be back in the day when you had to go out, you had to bust your butt, play in all these different venues going around the world mm -hmm. just to get your just to get your music out there. Now it's just mm -hmm. the click of a button, you can access millions and millions of people. Mm -hmm. It's just I'm thankful for it. You're thankful. Now you've been doing this thing for a while. You're 17 now, yes. right? Four years later, what's the feeling like knowing that at any given time you can drop music and do what you want? It's a great feeling, I mean, especially because I've been doing covers for so long and finally finding myself as an artist and being able to go in the studio, go to Nashville and write and, and record music and pe people actually care about, no matter what I put out, they're caring about, mm. they're, they're supporting my dream. So, I mean, it's, it's an awesome feeling to be able to experiment and find myself as an artist and still have the fans there mm. uh, to support no matter where I land. And you're coming from out of Tennessee. Not a lot of people make it from out of Tennessee. What's that like? It's, I'm thankful for it because um, I say I'm thankful a lot because I'm very, I'm very thankful. You're very humble. I'm very. Um, coming from Nashville, there's so many incredible country writers, and they tell stories in their songs, and I love telling stories mm. with music. I feel like some people get so lost in like cool beats and people. I, I love the story aspect of it. So going into Nashville and sitting now with co-writers that um, are incredible country writers, even though I'm not country, like the lyrics and the the combination together mm. make for a really interesting. Song. Well, it's amazing to me that you're not a country singer. I find that a lot of country singers sing about love, yeah. and that's your main focus. Why do you focus on love so much? I don't know, man. I'm a, I'm a loving person. I love to give hugs, and I mean, I feel like it's definitely a relatable thing um, to the teen, the teen atmosphere. Because 17, 18, even even 14 is when you fart, you finally start experimenting. And like, I haven't gone through a lot in life yet. I have, mm -hmm. but not as much as the adult. So not as much as adults do. So I'm just kind of <laughs> like I'm going through my love phase right now. And um, but I do have some songs on my EP that are about like um, my relationship I have with my dad that didn't work out. I have some about rumors. I have a song called Rumors, mm -hmm. and I have a song about traveling. So I try to I try to I try to keep it diverse. Keep it diverse. I mean that's really really cool. Mm -hmm. Now being a young guy and talking about uh, relationships and love and stuff like that. Do you ever get criticized about that? I mean there's always critics, but there's a lot there's always a lot of positive on especially on Twitter. I see. Um, there's always the people that are gonna try to bring you down, obviously, but the the positive, haters. Yes, the haters. The positive outweighs the negative, so it's been it's been easy for me to kind of ignore it. Let's talk about the project for a second. A piece of me, yes. right? Exactly what were you given? A piece of me. What, what did the name? Come it's from? kind of like well, I, I I had a bunch of EP names, um, all of like which. And it was kind of the theme of finally finding myself as an artist, finally bringing everything together, so giving a piece of me to them. Uh, but I let the fans vote, actually. I came up with five hashtags on Twitter, and I let them pick their favorite, and that one trended number one worldwide and had the most tweets, so we went with a piece of me, and I'm really glad with where I landed. Well, are you nervous about giving, like, more influences social media to let them choose? Well, I mean, they're the people downloading the songs or the people listening, so I felt like letting them pick would be the mm -hmm. best route to go, and I always love including them and stuff because it's so easy not to do with, with social media. And this is basically all acoustic, right? Yeah, it's a lot of acoustic, um, but everything, on, I played the acoustic on it, so um, everything on there is real instruments, though, like the guitar, the piano. Um, we actually sent, there's a guy uh, we, we did the MIDI piano, then we sent it off to a guy that records it. He, he plugs it into his, uh, his piano and it plays it itself like a real piano. So we got all the real instruments on there. And just, I'm just, so it sounds it's different. Like, it sounds it's different. a different project. It's definitely like indie. It's still pop, but it's, it's indie for sure. Makes more sense because, I mean, you're wearing two hats now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. What's it like being an executive and an artist? It's, I mean, it was stressful at first only because I didn't have like a huge team helping me out, but where I've landed now, um, I have an awesome support team, I have mm -hmm. awesome management. Um, I don't have a label yet only because um, I wanted to find myself as an artist and find my sound before I let the industry have anything to do with the making of mm -hmm. um, the music that I'm putting out right this second. But I have an awesome team behind me that's been helping me out. So it does get stressful sometimes, mm -hmm. um, especially being on tour, having to balance tour and social media and business. But it's about to You're come. You're doing this all by yourself. Yes. yes. You're a boss, kid. You're a boss. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's what's up. Let's talk about the label. I mean, you mentioned you don't have a label home mm -hmm. right now. Is there any way you want to be specifically? I mean, I, I really wanted to um, to build the massive, like there's been offers over the years. I really wanted to build a solid fan base, a solid family online and find myself only because I just now started recording original music. So I really wanted to um, find myself as an artist before, because um, a lot of people go into 
the music industry with no original music. Mm -hmm. They sign to a label from YouTube because they're doing covers and they're really popular. And then the label turns them into what they want them to be. So I wanted to find myself and uh, what I wanted to sound like before I let the industry well, have anything to do with it. The thing about you is being an independent artist, you do have uh, the platform to do things yourself. Were you ever nervous about putting out your first song? Oh yeah, I was definitely, I was so nervous going into the EP only because there's so many people right now that do have the big machine helping them pump out radio and all this other stuff, but it ended up um, su surpassing my expectations and we went number five overall on iTunes, number one on the Senior Songwriter Charts, so I was really, really thankful. You're killing them, you're killing them, and this is why we're here. Now you dropped a project on Valentine's Day, man. I don't know what the reason was. It's all about love. Something says about, about love. love. Something says <laughs> red and white, man. On Valentine's Day, what made you do that? Not a lot of people, people are scared to do that. Dude, well, I mean, first off, I'm a hopeless romantic, so I had to put it on Valentine's Day. But second off, um, the EP release tour, it was, we, we planned the EP release tour before we had an actual EP. So we had to we had to crunch, it was crunch time getting the EP written and produced and everything. And it just happened to land to where um, it was going to be finished by Valentine's Day, and the day after that was the start of the EP release tour, the 15th, so it, it, it worked out for her. Worked out, God's good. You got a song called Ohio, and you yes. touch on a lot about the teenage pressures. Mm -hmm. are, you feel, are you facing any of that right now? Of course, I mean, just having, uh, growing up, like, I, I mean, I had, I had both my parents in my life until I turned, like, 13, which is when I started music, mm -hmm. so, um, I was playing in bands with my dad, and my parents were together. My parents split at 13. I went with my Shh. dad because um, I felt like that was my only hope in music because that was the only thing I was doing was playing mm -hmm. bars and stuff with him. So I went with him, and um, him and my mom had kind of a bad relationship. Obviously, they split. The negative energy kind of he kind of focused that more onto mm -hmm. me after we left. So it ended up turning into uh, a nasty relationship. So I went back with my mom, which I'm th my mom's a warrior. Like she's been here for me since the beginning. Working she, three jobs. Yeah, three jobs, dude. She was a personal trainer. She waited tables. Uh, she uh, babysitted our autistic neighbor. And um, she was working her butt off, but always managed to find time for me. So going through all of that, I know a lot of kids can relate that have had family members pass away. I've talked to fans before that have had um, moms and dads pass away. Um, living with their grandparents, not having that love in their life, so it's just, it was just really, it's really cool talking to the fans and hearing their stories on that song and, their, and how it's touched them and different things like that. Makes sense, I mean the fans go crazy when they yes. hear that. Yeah, it's one I've of my favorites it. to perform live, so we got to do it in Ohio the other day, so it was nuts. So that was nuts. all of that come back and it was, it was awesome. Make it, alright, cool. Let's talk about your dad for a second. Mm -hmm. We talked about the teenage pressures, but as a musician, how much pressure is it knowing that your dad did this and now you have something to live up to? Well, I mean, my dad never was like big time or anything. I mean, it was a lot of pressure at first because I was playing uh, in a band with my dad who's obviously a lot better of a musician than me. But uh, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for what he taught me, and I'm thankful for um, the opportunities he did present me. Because I mean, I used to hate it back then, but now I'm just really thankful for the fact that. Uh, playing for so many people that didn't care and now going to this. Now they care yeah. so much. If we could look for a project from you and your dad, would that ever happen? I don't know. I mean, we don't talk much anymore, so um, we'll have to see. Maybe one day it'll, it'll oh, come back. Man, sorry to hear that, man. Let's focus up on New York. You're in New York City, you're touring. Jasmine yeah. V's on the tour, yes. Fifth Harmony's yes. on the tour. What's it like working with them? It's so cool, especially, I mean, I was really nervous going in because it's a lot of girls, and it's a lot of girl fans. And it's just you. Yeah, it's just me, up. it's just me. And uh, I thought the fans were gonna be a little bit uh, hesitant at first just because I'm a guy and they, they love girls, obviously, because mm -hmm. it's, it's a big girl tour. But um, the fans have been awesome. It was super hectic at first, getting everything together mm -hmm. and learning the EP because there wasn't much rehearsal going in because everything was so fast. Mm -hmm. um, but every show is getting better and better. And I mean, Ohio was incredible. Incredible. Chicago incredible. was incredible. New York City was incredible. So everything's just getting better and better as the day goes. And they're they're super awesome girls too. I've seen. When you're touching like different states and you're performing, mm -hmm. what's what do you find is like the hardest thing to do when you touch each state? The traveling aspect of it really gets stressful sometimes. I mean, you have to get up at 10 o'clock, bus call at freaking noon, sound check at, or meet and greet two, sound check four, mm -hmm. show at eight. Like, it just gets a little bit stressful. You lose a lot of sleep. And it wasn't a lot of off days on this tour mm -hmm. um, because there were so, so many days. There was a lot of back to back to back to back to back. 
So, I mean, the lack of sleep gets to you after a minute. Like, the other day I fell asleep and I didn't wake up till like five minutes before I had to go on and I freaked out. I was like, I'm so you didn't tired. Know where you were at. I was wiping the crust out of my eyes. Like, oh my God, I have to go on. And it was the biggest show of the entire tour, too. And I was like, wow. So, Crazy. I mean, just going, just the lack of sleep is definitely, and the lack of time to do anything, but to focus on the tour. So, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm, I'm thankful to be touring, but um, I'm definitely ready for my vacation. You're ready for the vacation? <laughs> yes. Let's get a, let's go a little bit back to like behind the scenes of the tour. Mm -hmm. Like what's it like behind the scenes when music, no music going on, it's just us. We're having a good time. How do we have fun? How do we have fun? Well, everyone loves to sleep. <laughs> everyone loves to. Uh, so everyone says, "Don't bother me." <laughs> no, we all after a lot of, a lot of times after the show, we all get on the bus, we turn on some Drake, we turn up, have some fun, dance mm -hmm. around. Um, turning up consists of dancing to two Drake songs and passing out <laughs> because it's, we're all so exhausted by the end of the day. So we get our little dance on, uh, play Drake's new mixtape. And, and I'm glad out. you mentioned Drake. Who else are you listening to right now? I mean, I love I love Drake on the on the urban side. I love Drake and Big Sean. I just I just started listening to J Cole. He's awesome too. J Cole's dope. Yeah, he's um, dope. On the on the other side of things, uh, John Mayer, Ed Sheeran, Damian Rice. Um, just, just found this artist, Matt Corby, this Australian guy. I love the singer-songwriter stuff, the mm -hmm. mellow stuff, because um, it inspires the sound I have now. So mm -hmm. listening to all of that stuff and it coming together, is, it heavily influenced my sound. Nice. What, what would you say is the craziest thing a fan has done to you on this tour? <sighs> on this tour? We had a really crazy experience in LA, actually. Um, we, sh we showed up to the venue, and we didn't tell anyone we were coming on accident. We just kind of showed up sooner than we thought we would. So we were like running around all these different doors, and um, my security guard actually was just joining us that day, and he wasn't there. So it was just me and my tour manager, who's smaller than me, <laughs> running around with hundreds and hundreds of girls like chasing us, like trying to find a door that was unlocked. And we had no idea where we were. So that was so running in a big circle. Not, yeah, they were all following us. We ended up like three stories down in a parking garage with like 300 girls surrounding us. Does it ever get like too outrageous where you're like, you know, I really just don't want to deal with this right now? From the it fans? I don't, I don't know. I, I think. No, I mean I really enjoy the fan interaction, especially like on a more personal level, like being able to. I just started this thing actually. After each show, five people that buy my EP get to come backstage and eat cereal with me after the show, and we all get to sit and talk about our problems, mm. about the show, about everything. So, spending time with the fans, I mean they're the ones that are responsible for all of this. So I, I always enjoy spending time. With them. You mentioned cereal. Is cereal your favorite? No, actually, I grew up a Pop Tart guy, but really? uh, but the but the EP are you got yourself a pal. I, I I eat that. I really? eat the Pop Tarts, the blueberry See, ones. Blueberry. The blueberry. I was a chocolate chip guy. I went through a cookie dough phase, double, double a fudge phase. Okay. I went through all kinds. I ate like two packs, of, uh, two packs of Pop Tarts a day for like thirteen years straight. So, so where did the cereal thing come from? I don't know. We were doing a photo shoot. We had this awesome photographer. who was like super crazy and random. So I got in a t I got in a tuxedo. Took my shoes off. Had a bowl of cereal and it was just really like stupid and quirky and we loved it so we, we threw it on the, the EPR. Nice, nice. If anybody could hang out with you for a day, what would it be like to chill with Jacob? It'd be a lot of running around. I mean, that's what tour, tour life is like. Off tour, it's a lot of, um, I do a lot of writing mm -hmm. um, in Nashville. I do a lot of recording. In my mm -hmm. downtime when I go home, I like to bowl and golf. Those are like my two. I'm good at bowling. Really? You got a challenge. Those are, my, those are my two nerdy obsessions. I like to bowl and golf. Um, I love this league. I love to hang out with family. I love, I love like being on the road. Like there's just so much running around. When I go home, I just like to chill and watch movies and whatever else and nap. And makes it makes sense. Yeah. All right. You got a birthday coming up, don't you? It's wild now, dude. It's November. But you gotta prepare. I'm gonna be 18 though. That's I'm the gonna thing. Be an adult. It's, it's, it's big. It's big. <laughs> Um, huge accolade is something that everyone doesn't see. I mean, 18 is huge. Some kids die early. I mean, some people don't get to celebrate. Yeah. What's it going to be like for Jacob Wiseyes to turn 18? Well, I mean, I was really nervous as a kid. Like, 18 is like the big adult. Like, I'm going to be an adult now. But, like, being around adults all the time, I already feel more mature than mm -hmm. I actually am. So, I think it's just going to be, I think it's going to be mellow. Like, no celebration? Chill. I don't know, it's, it's just gonna depend where I am. I'll probably be on tour or something. You gotta come to New York. You gotta come to New, New York. York. We're gonna hang out. We're gonna hang out. You know, we're gonna the yeah, we'll, we'll go out, have some fun, okay. and uh, we'll do it the dope way. We gotta, you know we gotta have some steaks. Ah, steaks, steaks. That's my thing. You know what I mean? A little salad on the side. Yeah. That's good. You turn 18, are we expecting a project based off of being 18, based on being an adult? 
Possibly. I mean, I don't know where. I'm still like I'm still finding myself, like I said, as an artist. So I mean, going back to Nashville, it's gonna be really interesting. These next mm -hmm. couple EPs, these next couple albums, like really trying to dial in mm -hmm. the sound I want to go for. Um, I want to be even more. Um, I want a lot more realness in my EP. I want it to be a little bit like messy and edgier than uh, where this last EP. But I'm more really, transparent for the fans. Yeah, I'm really excited just to see where everything lands. Like, like I said, that was my first. My EP was like my first like big writing week. Mm -hmm. So going back to Nashville and having a lot more time to write and record is going to be super interesting. You got to tell me what are you going to do when you when you touch down in Tennessee? <sighs> what's what's going to be the first three things? That I'm you probably going to go to Cracker Barrel first. That's my favorite place mm -hmm. in the world. I'm gonna go. I've never been. You've never been? Never been. Country cooking, baby. That's where my mom works too, so we get that 30% discount. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm probably going to um, go straight home, see all my friends, mm -hmm. all my family. I haven't seen my mom and sister in forever. They came out to a show the other day, but mm -hmm. I haven't got to see them for a short amount of time. And then I'm gonna hit the bed. I got six cats waiting for me at home with lots of cuddles. So. Six it's cats? Gonna be intense. It's gonna be intense. Six cats, a dog, and a guinea pig. Thing. What's your favorite animal? Someone, someone named my label Six Cats a Dog. Six Cats a Dog. <laughs> <laughs> he said it right here. What's your favorite animal? I gotta know. My favorite. I'm a cat guy. That most definitely. I always will be from a young age. Like I used to play football actually, and the football field right across from it was an adoption center with mm -hmm. a bunch of cats and dogs and stuff. And I told my mom if I scored a certain amount of touchdowns that she had to take me across the street and let me adopt a cat. And I, sure, I did it. And that's what you did? And that's what I did from, so that, from you, that age. I've always been you, a cat guy. Are you playing football anymore? No, I mean, I miss it so much. I love, when I go home, I always go to high school football games and watch. I love watching, and my neighbor is a high school football coach, so mm -hmm. I love going to the games and watching. But as a kid, I was always a big football, basketball player, uh, tennis, track, everything. Well, you play lots of sports. Yes. Yeah, so do you player. have do you have a like a favorite uh, basketball team, favorite football My team? Favorite, I don't watch a lot of NBA. I, I watch a lot of NFL though. I'm a big Saints fan, so. Really? You like? Oh, I'm going with the Giants, man. I'm Giants on team. Hey, you gotta. <laughs> it's alright. You gotta I'm deal with it. Nah, no, I get it. I get it. Let's go back to the project for a second. If we could have you choose three dope words that could describe your project, who would they be? Real. Different and uh, and uh, me. me. Exactly, what's me about the project? Like, what did you give that people should expect? Well, me is what? like is like all of my influences growing up. Like, I lived in Tennessee, but like my dad was always listening to like John Mayer and Jack mm -hmm. Johnson, and really trying to find like all these different influences on top of all the new people I'm working with, and me as myself as a new, like a, a singer songwriter. Um, all of that coming into play in the new EP is going to be it's going to be super fun. Amazing. I'm looking forward to it. You've been on X Factor. Yes, for a Something short I, short time. <laughs> no, but it, it's amazing to me that first round you get off this thing and then fans come out of nowhere. What was it like? I mean, it was it was a great experience. I played my first show ever the night before I went and auditioned for X Factor. I was in Nashville playing Teen Who. It was a huge show, like a thousand people there, and they called me and they're like, "We would really love." I wasn't going to do it at first. Um, and they were like, we really want Jacob to come, and I was like, I don't, I didn't know what to expect. I thought I was gonna be playing for like a couple producers or something, and then I was thrown up on stage in front of all the celebrity judges, and I'm just like freaking out, so I'm prepared, and they all love me except Demi. So it was, was that cool. was that where <laughs> life changed for you? Or? I mean, it was definitely it was definitely a big moment, only because I mean, I didn't make it far, I didn't get much exposure off the show, but it was definitely a, a big learning experience. Like that was the first taste of like traveling. It was my first time on an airplane when I flew to Miami for boot camp. Um, it's a big it, deal. It was a big, yeah, it was a be definitely the first big taste of the music industry for me. When you got off of the X Factor, is that when you knew that art, like artistry is going to be something? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I was, I was already hitting YouTube pretty heavy, mm -hmm. um, and I, wasn't, I was doing all right, and then soon after that is when one of the guys from One Direction had tweeted my YouTube video, and that's when it really hit home for me. That's when I really was like, I need to start taking this seriously. All of the traction that came in from that, I just tried to take advantage of it and utilize it and start really taking YouTube seriously. Major. So you and One Direction, is are, you guys are really close, right? No. No? No. But he oh. tweeted my video, so well, I'll <laughs> pretend. I can really? pretend. You can pretend. Yes, we're we'll link that up. We're homies, because he, cause he, he, he reached out. Reached out. He linked reached it out. Out. He tweeted it. He tweeted it. And it helped me. It really boosted my career, so I'm really thankful for that. One million in the game now. Absolutely. Pretty big. Let's talk about JW Records. An executive, you're young, 
Dude, it's awesome. It feels so good that we have ownership of everything and creative control and be able to pick the people I want to work with and especially like um, like I have an, such an awesome producer, Dave Spencer in Nashville, like just working with all these different people and be able to hand select them and move everyone where I want them to be. It's so, it's so nice being in control and I, I, I love it. Do you feel like you have a hard time doing the creative aspect and then jumping over to the managerial aspect and saying, hey, I this mean, is... Yeah. Yes and no. Like I have such a great team now, so it's, it's a lot less on my shoulders. But um, before it was very stressful because it was just like me and my mom, and we were just trying to hash everything out. But I'm where, where I'm at now. I'm really I'm not I'm stress free. If you weren't doing music, what okay. do you think you would be? Dude, sports most definitely. I was such a sports guy growing up, so I would definitely be. I don't know if I'm. I don't know. I'm pretty tall, so I could probably be an athlete. I think you could play some ball. Possibly, maybe you'd get to tennis. That's right. a little bit less, a little bit less <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> I'm excited to see what happens between you and your tour mates after the tour is over. Are you guys going in the studio? Most definitely. I mean, me and Jasmine became really great friends. Me and Mahogany, all the girls are super talented too, and we mm. we've been hanging out. I mean, they're our, all of our schedules are super busy. We're always running past each other, just quick haze. But um, we definitely bonded over this tour, and it's going to be absolutely great to see what happens. Before we get out of here, man, I gotta ask you, you're, you're working on a special edition tee. I seen it on Instagram. Oh, yeah, I baby. was creeping, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Derek. So Derek's my bodyguard. Okay. He's one of the most coolest guys ever. He's been with me since the beginning of all of this touring and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so one of my fans, I, I've been vining him recently because he's so funny. He doesn't even have to try. He's just so <laughs> funny because he's such a big guy, but he has like a giggle and he's just a, such a teddy bear. Mm -hmm. So I've been vining him. And uh, one of these vines, I, I vined him and he was just sitting there like this, just looking away. And I was like, Derek, you're an angel. And he just looked at me with like, a, like he was going to kill me. <laughs> and one of my fans photoshopped angel wings on him with a halo. So we're going to have to pop the limited edition t-shirt. Make it happen, man. You got to throw me one over here, man. Absolutely. We love the rocket. Absolutely. Love the rocket. <laughs> we got to go, man. But before we go, I want you to tell your fans one of the biggest things that you would like to see them do to change their life and yours because it's they're following you and you're so instrumental in well, their they've life. Well, they've been so incredible lately. Like it's become a lot. They've become a lot more mature as I, I have too. Mm -hmm. And like they, in the past, there's been all these stupid like rumors and mm -hmm. blah blah blah. But it's really they've become real music fans and they are always so supportive. They're always sweet myself, they're always promoting me. I have an update account that knows more about my life than I do. They're always keeping me updated. So I'm just so thankful for all of you. Thank you so much for sharing my music, buying my music, and telling your friends, coming to my concerts, waiting in the cold, and you guys are awesome. I really appreciate you. And tell them, if they don't have the EP, to go get it. Go get the EP. Peace to me on iTunes. Do you have it? <laughs> I have it, I have it. Real fans right here, baby, real fans. <laughs> there it is, man. I want to thank you, man. It has been a pleasure. Thank you. I'm glad we could do this, man. We got to do this again when you come Absolutely. to New York. You promise. You got to come to a show. Absolutely. Yes. We'll, I'll come and hang out and uh, bring the dope this thing with me. Yes. Right? Let's do it. Well, this is Dopeness Magazine. I'm King Sharif. This is where the dope survives. And this is Jacob Wise Science. <laughs>